I gotta say that, that librarians uh, have long been among my heroes. Um, this, this dates back to when I was a kid and uh, the commie scare was loose in the world. And it was the librarians that were protecting our right to read in the library uh, at a time when you know, opposing the, uh, the dominant um, crusade was, was very much not in anyone's interest. Um, so the, the library is, is the nexus of the play of the, the uh, acceptance of the information age. Uh, it's just is natural to me. Um, I, I think Loriana has, has done a, a great job of starting this down this path uh, to, to think about access to information without, without restrictions of place and without restrictions of format. And, and I look forward to, to continuing. Um, my own position on open access to information um, is really rooted in the university mission, which begins to create and disseminate knowledge and art through research and creative inquiry, um, and they go on in further detail. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about is, is not open access journals, but open access to my results within the framework um, of the journals that have existed since, since I've been doing the research. Um, in a university community, uh, we seek rewards in the form of reputation and credit, uh, not in the form of currency. And because of that, it is in our interest to have our work uh, appreciated uh, by other people, because only after they appreciate it are we going to, to receive the credit uh, and the reputation of that credit. Uh, so, so for us, the incentive should be in favor of putting the work where it will be read and where it will be appreciated. Uh, not in, in hiding it for uh, any kind of, of other advantage. Um, so I am in particular uh, a computer scientist. Um, I'm in the Institute for Software Research, which makes, which is where the software engineers hang out uh, within the School of Computer Science. I think the journal structure in my field has been more progressive than the journal structures in the fields that we've about so far today. Uh, the, the publication policies in, in my professional societies have changed fairly systematically over the years, uh, mostly in favor of more liberal access. Uh, so when I began doing research, the unit of currency, the unit of, 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 of work to disseminate was the technical research report. Uh, in a journal, and it turns out in computer science, uh, we have a number of high quality conferences where the conference publication is the archival publication. Um, this has at various times put us with odds, all of computer science at odds with all the rest of university reports and promotion processes because our premier publications often go into conferences rather than into journals. Uh, but because they're going into conferences, the publication cycle for us has been shorter for conferences than for journals. Probably one of the factors that, that led to, to this in the first place. I realize that's, that's different for us than it is for everyone else, but that, that's the setting in which I grew up. Um, many of us, since the web was new, created personal web pages on which we uh, Dis disseminated our uh, technical reports, our preprints, and our papers to the extent that the copyright uh, policies of the journals permitted that. Uh, and over the years, the, the journals became um, more liberal and have for some time now permitted us to post at least preprints and sometimes finished copies um, on our personal web pages for dissemination to whoever. Um, indeed, Back when copyright permissions were on paper, they would accept a paper, I would receive a piece of paper, I'd supposed to sign the paper and mail it back. Um, I made a practice of marking those up with a pen to, to, to retain for myself the right to grant permission for non-commercial use. Uh, this was probably at variance with the processes of the organizations, but nobody ever called me on it. Uh, and since they didn't object, I didn't see any reason to, uh, to raise the issue to, to the level that anyone would notice. Um, so, I, I looked at my digital archives this morning and I found old files dating back into the mid-1990s uh, that were web pages 
that, that were disseminating publications. So I've been, I've been doing it that far back. Um, I should note that I have, I have favored publishing with the, the conferences and journals of my professional societies rather than for the example of the Elseviers, uh, largely because of this distinction in, in their, their copyright policies. So I, I realized pretty quickly that, uh, pub, that disseminating via the web uh, has all the charm of, of hanging my Vita on the wall uh, and letting people scroll down through the Vita looking for what they wanted. Uh, I didn't have much I could do about that uh, for a while. Uh, but in 2002, I created a personal database, uh, which uh, has the meta information about all of my papers. And so remember that in the early 1990s, late 1990s, and even in 2002, internet speeds were very slow. And so the, the format in which you look at someone's CV, scrolling down a web page, look at a title and say, I think that might be interesting, now I'll go away and have a cup of coffee called the PDF downloads, um, <clears throat> is not the most desirable way, the most effective way of bringing people into my work. So what this database does uh, is provide a, an overview page that has the title, the, the citation information, the abstract, uh, and links to the file if I can produce it to a digital library if, if, if I can't retain it uh, to some other source, possibly to auxiliary material, uh, data talks that I gave. Uh, so there's, a, there's an overview page that, that the database um, allows you to <coughs> visit and decide whether you want more and then retrieve more. Current, uh, current transmission speeds, current bandwidth makes this point, I think. Uh, but at the time, it was far from quaint. It was it was a real real help. Uh, so this uh, this personal database, which is named Marion after the uh, librarian of uh, uh, provided uh, this service for me. Um, and then in uh, 2007 or 2008, I learned about the Harvard resolution to put all of the Harvard research on the Harvard Institutional website. So that, that's the right thing to do. Uh, this was about, this, I think this was after NIH um, was requiring public access to, to materials they had supported, but before the rest of the federal government was coming around. Uh, so I was delighted to, to see Harvard take this public position, and I went to my faculty senator and said, shouldn't we do this too? And much to my delight, we were already in the process of doing it. Um, the uh, open access resolution of November 2007 was about the point that, that I was uh, appreciating how important it was. Uh, and that set the basis for um, not only the university principle that we should share, but also for what has become uh, the Reach Research Showcase. Uh, so a couple of years ago, I started converting my personal database over to the, the university database um, and including uh, setting up a selected work page where I currently have educational papers highlighted, but, but I have plans to convert that to, uh, to a personal selection of highlights. Um, I'm really looking forward to no longer having to maintain my own infrastructure. I'm looking forward to the university being the repository. Uh, so that I don't have to worry about making sure that all the files are still intact. I don't have to worry about if I walk away for some reason, uh, are the files going to evaporate. Um, I don't have to worry about trying to get Google to index my database because the Research Showcase has already taken care of that. Um, so this resource that the university has developed and provided has taken a lot of the administrative burden from me while providing most of what I was creating for myself. Uh, even though uh, only some of my papers are represented there, the monthly download report uh, usually shows several times as many downloads as there are papers uh, of mine in the showcase. So somebody's out there reading. I'm not, not tracking, getting information about who it is, of course, but somebody is out there caring enough to, uh, to download the papers. So I, I'm, I'm happy with uh, using the, the research showcase. This allows me to continue to work within the uh, established publication venues that are the most common ones in my field. Um, 
and then to take that material and, and to, uh, to use it um, first on my own website. And now uh, I should add that the, the copyright policies of my professional organizations permit not only personal web pages, but also institutional repositories to provide the information. So I'm, I'm clean on that count. Um, and my understanding is that other professional organizations are coming this direction as well. Um, so uh, this, this is serving me well. Uh, it's providing um, a nice hybrid between the uh, established uh, publication venues and <coughs> my instinct that the research ought to be available to anyone I can persuade to take a look at it or anyone at the university can help me persuade to take a look at it. And uh, I can encourage uh, you as my colleagues uh, to share your work broadly and to uh, think about this particular um, technical vehicle um, as a way to do it. The little extra effort uh, that it takes to uh, to do this is amply repaid, and as far as I can tell, it's not competitive with any other venue through which I might want to distribute. Thank you. Thank you.